Today we're going to talk about the first step of bookkeeper cleanup. So I did another video on that and you guys really liked it. So I thought I'd break it down a little further. So this video is all about how to start, like the first step. And let me know in the comments if you would like some of the other steps spelled out a little more as well. Here is what they all are. So it starts out with gathering the documents and then you take a look in QuickBooks. Then you circle back with your client and get a little more information from them. And then you want to determine the time frame, which is really important. And the fifth thing I said, just start with one thing because it can be super overwhelming. So I tell you kind of where to start and then also take Take notes. So let's dive into first of all, what documents do you need from your client? Even before you really look at their books, make sure they are gathering these documents for you. Definitely their bank statements for any and all accounts that they have with their business. So if they have a couple checking and a savings or whatever, if they have any credit cards, you want those statements. And with the bank statements, if they have check images, that is amazing. Even if they can pay like a little bit more to their bank to have those images, it is worth it because that helps you out a lot. Some banks provide it automatically and others do not. If your client has received that are helpful, you might want to get those as well. Sometimes that can be like a huge mess. So you might not even want to deal with it, but I do have a video all about how to deal with receipts. It's part one and part two. You can check that out after this video. And in that, I talk about how I try to not really deal with too many receipts, but you know, if they have them organized, that's great. Or if you want to like get a disorganized box and then just refer to them if needed, that's good too. And then depending how else they run their business, there might be some other things. If they do payroll, any payroll reports, maybe access to the client's payroll. If it's an online, you know, payroll company, any tax info, like maybe the last tax return they filed would be really helpful as well as bank deposits. So anytime that they're putting money in the bank, like how is that getting there? Like, do they fill out a little piece of paper? Is there an invoicing system of some kind that you need documentation for? Or is it like a credit card processing website that maybe you can get access to or get some of those reports? So anything that is going to give you clues to how money is going in and out of these accounts is going to help you out a lot. And in that other video, I mentioned the more comprehensive cleanup one. I talk about pricing, how to charge for cleanups, and then also kind of what I see is the difference between like a cleanup and then just a catch up, like catching up someone's books. All right. And step two is take a look in QuickBooks. So you should be invited to your client's QuickBooks account. They should add you as an accountant. There's a number of other ways you could also do that depending on, you know, if you're starting the account or what they're using. I am a bookkeeper who only works in QuickBooks. Again, you can make that distinction within your business if you'd like. You kind of just want to look in their books and kind of see what's going on. And that is going to allow you to ask the right questions in the next step. So get in their QuickBooks, see when it was last reconciled. You can pull some of those reports, pull a profit and loss, pull a balance sheet, definitely go into the bank feeds tab, see if they have that hooked up to their bank account, look at invoices, see if they have outstanding invoices, if they're even using QuickBooks online to invoice. On the balance sheet, you can look at owner's draws, see what like salary money they've been taking out. If there's payroll, again, look and see what's going on with payroll. There's going to be some on the balance sheet, some on the profit and loss. So just kind of get a feel for what's going on, what type of vendors they have, what type of expense as they have. And then you can start noting a few questions that you might have for the client. And if cleanups is something that you want to dig in more as a bookkeeper, I have a link in my description box. There's a colossal cleanup from Veronica Wasik. And so I kind of see her as like the expert in, you know, cleanups. So you can check out her classes. They're linked in the description box. And my name is Morgan. If we haven't met, my website is finepoints.biz and I love helping bookkeepers get organized. Definitely subscribe to my channel if you would like to and give this video a thumbs up. And that brings us to step three, which is to have another phone call or meeting with your client and start asking some of those educated questions. Now that you have seen some of their vendors, you've seen kind of like where their money is going. You can start getting more details about regular expenses and regular income that is in their bank. So you can start making lists, for example, like what bills are they paying every month? Like, do they always have a rent that goes to, you know, Jose Martinez? Like, is that a check that they write every month? And then they always have a water bill that comes from the city. They have a phone bill every month. They go to Costco and they always buy this certain thing at Costco. Like maybe they're buying office supplies at Costco. So this is going to help you as you're categorizing all these transactions. You won't have as many questions if you get this background information ahead of time. So all those things I just mentioned were about their expenses, their vendors. So also ask them about their income. So how does money look when it comes in? Who does it come from? Does it come from PayPal? Are you running credit card transactions? Are you invoicing and then getting money in through that way? Are people sending you checks? Do you do bank deposits? And how many income sources are there? Usually income, depending on the business, for my clients at least, there are less sources of income, less categorization that needs to happen with income than expenses. And your client might not even need all their income broken down. Sometimes it is helpful for them to know and track like where their money is coming from, but they might also just want it in like one big bucket. And that makes actually your job easier because you don't have to, you know, 
specifically categorized as many things. You're just putting it all into income. All right. And within this chat with your client, you need to make sure that you have a clear time frame, meaning what years of the books are you cleaning up? And they probably have an idea of this going into it. They probably are like, oh, I need to file taxes this year, or I need to file taxes for the last three years because I haven't done that. And so I would definitely prioritize whatever they are trying to file, like whatever taxes they're trying to prepare, because that is going to be their priority and probably the main thing that they want to pay you for. And say they've already filed taxes for five years ago, four years ago, and three years ago, but they're still kind of interested in having those books cleaned up because they just want the financial records for their own, you know, use. So they might decide they don't want that historical data depending on how long and how expensive it is to clean up their biggest priority. So determine the time frame, the year that you're starting with. In my experience, it is most commonly just last year. So I'm in doing like right now it's 2024. If a client hired me for a cleanup, I would probably be cleaning up starting January, 2023. Or sometimes it's been like halfway through the year and they just want to start you know, this year in January, cause they've, you know, had a mistake halfway through the year, but determine the time frame. And my next step is just start with one thing. It can 100% be overwhelming. I totally understand that. You're like, oh no, where do I start? I see all these problems, but the thing is just start somewhere. And my last step, I'm going to talk about like taking notes. So like you will be finding errors along the way, but I want you as much as possible to try to stay focused on one thing at a time. So what I would recommend is get on the bank feeds, get in January of whatever year you're doing and start with the income because I find that the income is just a little bit easier. It's more straightforward and there's usually less transactions. So maybe on January 4th, they got paid $500. Figure out where you need to categorize that $500. And hopefully you'll be able to figure that out based on the conversations with your client or based on that documentation that you gathered in step one. And so because this video is just like step one, I'm not going to go into, you know, all the different things that you could do, but basically you can kind of figure it out and you couldn't really go in any order as well. But I would start with the income and then maybe do the expenses and then look at invoices and then look at payroll and then reconcile January. Let me know in the comments if you do have a specific questions or issues and I can try to make a video maybe just with a compilation of some of those issues or weird things that you might come across when you're doing a cleanup, something like that. A few tips I like to make just kind of like dummy accounts like you can use the ask my accountant account and anything that you don't know, say you have like five checks and you don't know where to categorize them, put them in a category, you know, that says ask client about these checks or something. And you can use either bigger categories or smaller categories. Sometimes it's easier to just kind of clump things all together and to ask my accountant. Sometimes if there's specific things, like maybe there's like some payroll questions that I want to keep separate and like, remember, I'll make a little new category in the chart of accounts and start like categorizing stuff in there until I know where to put it. And then as you're working, I am always taking a lot of notes. So I have a few like lists going. One would be a list of questions to ask my client and included in that can be things that you need from them. So maybe you need a receipt for this thing, or maybe you need a check image for this other thing. If there's missing information, you can note that. And then I also have like a to-do list going for myself. So things like, oh yeah, I have to come back to that payroll issue. Something weird was going on with all the rent expenses. So I need to go back and look at that. So I'll, you know, just have a running list for myself so I don't forget anything. And I can also focus on the task at hand and not keep getting distracted. If there are a lot of like kind of weird vendors or tricks that you need to remember. I'll also make a list of that stuff. Like maybe sometimes one vendor goes in one category and sometimes it goes in another category or it just every client has little tricks and things that they need to remember. So I usually have a spreadsheet that I will keep on going for that client just so we can remember some of those things. Cause before I started doing that, you know, I felt like I maybe would ask the same question like one month and then like four months later I would forget and ask the same question again. So now I just make myself notes. And within those notes, you can also just start paying attention to what about this process needs to be tweaked. So do they need a better system on filling out invoices? Do they need better division of duties for bank deposits. You'll most likely see some problem areas and then you can give your client some ideas on how to fix those problem areas, hopefully. 